How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing fantastic. Today we are doing something a little quick and dirty, but it should be kind of fun. Uh, essentially my cousin, a good cousin of mine, um, actually my wife's first cousin, so technically my cousin-in-law, is in need of a new gaming PC. So he approached me recently and asked if I could help him out, and I said, sure, of course. So um, I was just going to do this on the side without filming anything for the channel, and I decided, no, you know what, it'd be kind of cool if I parted out the list in front of you guys, brought you along for the ride, uh, so that maybe you can provide some feedback of your own, and we can sort of, uh, together, assemble the perfect rig for his needs. So this is part one of the little mini-series, so we're just going to be parting out uh, a, a parts list, uh, essentially, for him today. And then we're going to do a, a follow-up video, hopefully with all the parts, and then we're going to assemble it for him um, right here on the channel. So on that note, uh, Brandon's kind of looking for a uh, sort of a, a mid-range to high-end, sort of on the high-end scope of a gaming PC. He's looking to play like things like Rocket League, uh, CSGO, and a couple indie games like Binding of Isaac. And while these are not very taxing games at all, I kind of want to prepare him for several years down the line. I don't want to just give him the bare minimum. So, uh, And especially given his budget, uh, which is around 1000 to 300 a uh, thousand to thirteen hundred dollars, uh, with the potential to go even beyond that, up to fifteen hundred, I believe he said, uh, if it's if the value is going to pay off. Um, I think we can do a lot uh, more than just run those few games. And he he is sort of interested in showing some interest in potentially playing you know other games in the future. Obviously, if he does want to jump into the foray of AAA games that are out there right now, uh, then I want him to be equipped for that. So I'm not going to skimp too much. I'm really going to try to maximize his budget. Uh, also, he doesn't really have a monitor right now. Now, I think he said that he's going to wait to see what kind of specs that the computer has, uh, and then he'll sort of base his resolution off of what the system can handle, which I think makes a lot of sense. He's not too familiar with overclocking, and he was kind of uh, a little skeptical at first, saying like, well, does it, you know, shorten the lifespan of your of your components? And while it can with really aggressive overclocks, you know, if you're sustaining the same high voltage 24-7, uh, that way, then yeah, it can be harmful. But I'm, I'm planning to overclock his system myself uh, with a more like moderate overclock. I don't want to go too aggressive on it. Uh, so I think we're going to squeeze a little bit extra performance out of his system um, without really uh, any of the ne ne negative drawbacks with overclocking. So that should be good. Now, the other thing that he mentioned uh, in terms of just the, the overall style that he'd like his system to be, he did say that he would prefer a white case or he really likes the aesthetic of white chassis. So I'm going to bear that in mind for as we go about picking out the parts and uh, as far as LEDs, he says they're more or less optional. We'll see what we can do and if we have any extra expense or any uh, extra wiggle room once we've picked out all the more important parts. So on that note, we can just go ahead and dive into the uh, the desktop here. Um, I, we're going to be using two websites here, Newegg for all of the browsing. Uh, we're going to be window shopping with Newegg because they have a really powerful search feature. And then we're going to be plugging that into PC Part Picker to see what kind of uh, deals we can score on said components. So, uh, starting with the case, or let's just type in white case here. Let's search on Newegg, see what comes up here. Now, for $1,300, $1,300 to $1,500, you really can get uh, a really nice case for that sort of money, but the cases these days have also become increasingly more competitive, and you can get a really good case these days for around 100 bucks, sometimes even less. So I'm gonna bear that in mind. I don't want to go too all out on the chassis here, um, but uh, I was I was eyeing this actually. I had this in the back of my mind, the S340 Elite, which is um, in matte white. It's got a really nice tempered glass side panel. I did did my RGB build in December in that chassis, so that's that's a consideration. Um, the Eclipse P400 from Fantex is also a fantastic case. That's what I used for uh, a system config. Uh, about a year ago or so, and then we've also got the H440, a tried and true classic, of course, and uh, Inwin 303. Oh yeah, that's a pretty nice case. I don't know. I feel I feel a little bit conflicted with the uh, the uh, 303. I'm not so hot on the feet. The feet look kind of silly to me. They look, uh, my wife said that they look like duck feet, and now I can't unsee it. So, and then there's just a bunch of other some other cases that are a little bit older, but um, I'm gonna say tentatively right now. Let's go for the S340 Elite and Matt. And of course, I'm going to be um, sending this parts list to Brandon after it's all done, and he's going to look it over and either give his approval. We, we, we might tweak it. So by no means is this like yeah, set in stone here. This is all subject to change. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in, choose a case. There it is. Oh, you can get it on for 90 bucks at uh, Super Biz. That's cool. All right, let's move on to our CPU. Now, this is kind of could be a little bit interesting because of course now we have a, a bunch more options now with Ryzen um, now available so but because he's not doing any sort of like live streaming uh, or video editing the most he said in terms of like workstation stuff is is maybe some Photoshop some light Photoshop which is really uh, nothing a 
you know, a four core Intel Katie Lake chip cannot handle. So I think if just for pure gaming performance and uh, getting the most bang for our buck here, just in terms of frames, I'm gonna go for the 7600K. Let's see how much it is on Newegg here. 240 bucks, let's see if we can get that down even lower. The 7600K obviously is overclockable, so we can squeeze additional performance out of it. Uh, it does outperform the the current stack of like Ryzen 5 CPUs. You can take it quite far if you have a nice cooler on it, which I plan to put in this build as well. So 7600K, we've got one right here for 230 bucks. Is this also super biz? No, that's Amazon. Beautiful, okay. Now let's take a look at motherboards. Of course, we're gonna want a Z270 board so that we can overclock our chip. Um, maybe I should just do... I love how I said Newegg's great for its power search feature and I'm not using it at all. I'm just typing in shit randomly. You know, I wanna, I wanna hook him up with an Asus board because I, I personally like the UEFI uh, with Asus the most. I find it the most reliable and it, it's like the, the least finicky. Um, so just in case he's got to troubleshoot something and I'm not there to help him, obviously, uh, it won't be it won't be too bad. Um, we, let's see what we've got here. Let's let's sort this by lowest price because we don't need anything crazy. He's not going to have a whole lot of he's not going to need too much connectivity. This is Prime. Okay, 160 bucks for the ASUS Prime Z270, which is a whiteboard which would match with the case. This is nice. Our, our ROG Strix Z270H. Look at that PCB. Holy moly. That looks pretty wicked. This is this is good. I'm gonna say 170 bucks. That's that's reasonable for um for a gaming rig of this particular price point. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what we can get. See if we can shave that down, Z270H. Here it is for 155. I'll take it. But let's do a CPU cooler now. Uh let's see. Okay, obviously I want it to look nice and it should sort of match with the overall theme. I think this motherboard sort of provides a base of that, and let's just look at CPU coolers. You know what, I, I built with a, a Be Quiet Dark Rock 3 recently, and um, I still love that cooler till this day. 75 bucks, 65 bucks, yes, I'm doing it. Okay, this is a, supports LGA 1151, it's all black, it looks fantastic, it's super quiet, and it performs well, so uh, this is kind of a no-brainer for me. Next up, let's do some RAM. Let's do the RAMs, RAM DDR4, I don't know why I said RAM. Let's do memory. Memory DDR4. We'll do 16 gigs. It's sort of the sweet spot for most gamers these days. Most games don't maximize that. Now, I can also overclock his memory for him as well, so we don't necessarily need a super fast kit. This is only $124, $125, and it is $3,200. I'm going to go with uh, the Ripjaws 5 here. That looks pretty good. For $125, G-Skilled really does have some, some good deals on memory right now, especially with the, the, the price hike in DDR4. It's kind of insane. But let's see if we can find it even cheaper here, of course. DDR4, uh, let's see. G-Skill... Rip Jaws 5, 3200. That, that turns up nothing. It's because I forgot the period and G skill? Yes, it is. All right. It is period sensitive. Uh, let's see, 3200. This is a 2x16 gig kit of DDR4 for $120. Yes. Um, so, okay, we're looking good. We're in, we're in good shape right now. So let's do storage really quick. Uh, or no, let's do the graphics card first. So for a rig of his budget, I would say a GTX 10. 70, like a good 1070. You could go a 1080. That would be almost, that would be more than a third of the cost of the rig. And I feel like we'd probably have to cut a few corners to make that happen. And especially with the games that he's playing right now or that he plans to play, he doesn't really need a GTX 1080. As, as good a value as it is, I think the GTX 1070 still provides the overall better frames per dollar or value. So let's, let's just see GTX 1070s. What, what do we got here? I kind of already have my eye on the Asus Strix, depending on the price. 420, so it's about in line with uh, like the EVGA ACX 3.0 card. There are cheaper GTX 1070s, no doubt. Like there's the, uh, the Zotac GTX 7, 1070 Mini for 360 bucks. That is quite a bit cheaper, 40, 50, 60 dollars off, but it doesn't look as cool. It doesn't look nearly as badass as the Strix. So this is, and it also performs excellently. Just a really, really well-received cooler all around from multiple tech review sites. Okay, so no price discount on the PC part picker um, for $420 here. Oh, let's see, what's the difference here? Oh, one's the OC model. Okay, well the OC model looks like it's about the same price, so I'm just gonna add that. Let's look at power supplies. I think a 650 watt 
Sounds great. Not too much, not too little. Offers some additional headroom for overclocking. There is this one, Supernova G2 for 90 bucks. Let's just get him a Logisys. Let's get him this $40 Logisys and then his whole computer will just melt. Seasonic, oh, that's $150. I really do like Seasonic power supplies. This one, the SSR 650RM is $80, which is $10 cheaper than the EVGA Supernova 650. Um, Seasonic's a great brand. They make some really good power supplies. And it's johnnyguru.com recommended. 9.8 out of 10. Okay, let's let's see what we can do here. Uh, Seasonic, here we go for $77. Okay, yeah. And I think that just leaves storage. So let's start off with an SSD. He's gonna need one of those to boot off of, maybe store some applications. He doesn't need NVMe. Honestly, that's, that's a little overkill for what he would even use it for. Samsung 850 Evo. I mean, it's it works, it's fast, and it's a pretty decent um, dollar per gig. There is the Crucial MX300, 525 gig capacity, it's kind of interesting. Or 275. Huh. 275 gigs, compared to 250 gigs on the 850 EVO. The 850 EVO is a little bit faster, but I don't know, you get, you get an additional 25 gigs, uh, whatever, uh, on this drive and it's $10 cheaper. I'm gonna pick this one just, just for now. If you guys think, uh, let me know in the comments what, you, what your opinions are on the matter, or if you have a, a, third, a third candidate in mind. Okay, that's good. And then we'll just do for storage, let's do, uh, or for a hard drive, one terabyte, WD Black. I doubt he'll be needing more than that. He can always add more storage in the future if he needs. Done, okay. Um, Oh, you know what? So that Seasonic power supply, let's go back to that. It has ugly cables. Here they are. Oh God, oh, they're hideous. Oh no, we can't do that. That is a no-go. Oh boy. <laughs> so here's what we could do. We could spend a little bit more on a power supply of the same wattage, like the Supernova 650G2, that has black cables, okay? Or, we could just buy an extension kit, just like a pure, simple black extension kit to hide, to mask all the Seasonic cables, uh, those ketchup and mustard bastards. So it's $30 for this Fantex kit. That's around what I was expecting it to be. Th then again, these do look a bit nicer, even than the EVGA stock cables, right? Because they're kind of fabric-y and nice and sleevey. Let's let's just do, let's just do these. Add accessories. Add a custom part. Perfect. And it updates with the price. Okay. Um, I think the part list is complete. Are we missing anything? Did we get to check all the boxes? Oh, LEDs. LEDs. I mean, meh. How much how much does a an NZXT Hue Plus go for these days? Sixty dollars. Yeah, that's a little bit much for just some LEDs. At least for for Brandon's needs, because that wasn't really on his his like must-have list. So maybe we'll just go with something like, let, let's just factor in 15 to $20, maybe $15 for an LED strip, it, should we get to that point. Uh, and granted, there are already LEDs on the video card and I believe on the motherboard. So there is gonna be a bit of bling shining through that tempered glass panel on the S340 Elite. So let's see what our total cost comes out to with all these parts added. Drum roll please, $1,300. And $49, that is right within our price range. Uh, obviously, it's a bit on the high end of what what uh, what Brandon's budget is. Um, but for now, I think this is a pretty solid list. But you guys let me know what you think of the parts list so far. If you think it's awful, if you think some of it works but could be uh, improved. And why is this G-Skill kit red? What the hell is that? All right, so the RAM kit's been updated to black. We still have the same price at the end of the day. And wait, what the hell? Why is there, why is a freaking SSD M.2? God, good Lord. I should not be allowed to part out people's systems. Let's take a look at this really, really quick. MX300 M.2. It's not, it's $100. It's $100 here, but the two and a half inch drive was what? Also $100. Okay, I don't know. It might look kind of ugly. It's not It's not the prettiest M.2 drive. It's a little nasty. It's a little nasty. Is there, let's take a look at the motherboard really quick to see if there's a, an M.2 cover on it. No, 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 there is not. All right, so I'm thinking just based on cosmetics alone, I'm gonna opt for the two and a half inch model of the MX300. 
because it won't look like crap. So there's our new total price at $1,354.65. Again, this is using PC Part Picker, a great website. Everyone should go check it out if you haven't heard of it. Um, but uh, that is going to conclude this parts list for Brandon's new gaming PC. Altogether, I think he's going to be thrilled with it. There might be one or two things that he might change. Uh, it's completely up to him. But overall, I think it's a pretty solid build that we have here. Yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this part one video. Part two is going to be uh, me getting all the parts in, building the damn thing, and potentially you know, doing some testing on it uh, if you guys are interested in that. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. I told you it was going to be quick and dirty. I told you. So hopefully you guys don't mind too much. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to toss me a like before you go and be sure to get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.